clear. Dobro veche. Divine Pisces. 2.22. It is Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. I'm going to do our union update for today. Um, also going to kind of continue on with what I was talking about uh, this morning on the daily message from Spirit about um, shifting timelines. Um, so, I mean, I've kind of discussed this with other readers before. I've discussed this, I think, on my channel before with you guys. Um, and I know I discussed it on the uh, 411 event um, with Jupiter about, you know, the things, the strange things that I kind of experienced earlier this year after I um, basically released my connection with my Divine Masculine. Um, almost immediately after um, he stopped speaking, um, basically my soulmate showed up. Now, that's significant because um, it was like as soon as he showed up, things kind of started shifting, okay? Um, and I really officially released my connection in February, okay? At the end of February, and that's when things started getting... Uh, started kind of uh, progressing with my soulmate and the trajectory of our uh, interactions and our relationship and the, basically the, the way that things kind of went <sighs> clear um, basically the timeline was pretty much identical to what happened between me and my divine masculine only in a shorter period of time but almost exactly the same all the landmarks were there everything pretty much happened exactly in the same sequence. It was really bizarre for me. It was, it, and, and the fact that his energy was so similar to my Divine Masculine's really threw me off, like almost identical to, like I would say pretty much identical. Honestly, if, I mean, if I didn't know he was a different person, um, I, I wouldn't know. Like the energy was that much, that much the same. And so that's significant. Right, because there was a period there where, again, exactly the same thing happened, where it triggered me uh, the same as what happened like with, with my Divine Masculine almost a year before. So I was just sitting here going, okay, so I'm so confused. Like, is my DM not my DM? Who is this guy? Yada, yada. And then I, I think I shared with this a little bit um, on, you know, the 411 event about um, collapsing timelines and basically how my soulmate, yes, my soulmate is coming in to help me heal because my Divine Masculine couldn't. Um, and he is a soul connection, possibly a father in a past life, but also the reason the energy is the same is because it was almost like I was collapsing a timeline, right? It was like basically this is what would have happened. This is basically what would have happened with my DM if my my DM would have been able to step up, right? Um, and so I was like, okay, so I collapsed a timeline. That makes a lot of sense. But then it kind of hit me this morning that it's like actually I think I skipped a timeline. I think I moved over into a different timeline. It's like he is my DM, but he's not my DM. Does that make sense? So it's like this whole idea that I basically jumped a timeline. Um, have you ever talked to somebody about something that you remember incredibly vividly? They were there, <laughs> you know, and you, you're talking to them about it and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember that at all. Okay, just stay with me here. Who's to say that we didn't jump a timeline there? Who's to say that somewhere during our journey uh, we skipped over into a different timeline and that's why that person doesn't remember that because maybe in the timeline that we're in now, they weren't there. It didn't happen. Like, okay, you can you can think about, okay, well, maybe that person's memory is not so great. Okay, well, maybe. But have you ever had somebody tell you something that you just don't remember? And you're like, that did not happen, I swear. I swear that did not happen. Like, like I would swear on a stack of Bibles that that never happened. How do you remember it so vividly? Okay, like, did I black out? Like, I know I wasn't, I wasn't not sober. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, if you think about those things, and, and honestly, there's so much stuff that has happened over this past year that I'm pretty much at the point where I pretty much believe it now. Like, I just believe you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm vulnerable, maybe I'm not, I don't know, but it's just like, you know, there's too much weird stuff happening for it not to be real. Do you see what I'm saying? It's too weird to not be real. Right. So that being said, I, I almost feel like maybe, you know how I've been saying something's been coming in October. Clear. It could be those of you who who, you know, are maybe jumping a timeline that you're, you're going to make that timeline complete or you're going to collapse a full timeline or that timeline is not going to happen. Like if you have a quote unquote plan B coming in, this could literally be your counterpart just in a different, 
in a different timeline and you've skipped a timeline. Like it's really weird how to think about it that way. Clear, but honestly at this point, <laughs> <laughs> at this point anything's possible okay um so i just wanted to discuss that with you guys and i really would like to hear you guys' um take on this like have you had kind of experiences like this where somebody's energy was similar to somebody else that you knew or or even your divine masculine divine feminine whatever or um you know have you ever had an experience where you remember something so vividly and somebody doesn't or vice versa i mean i really want to know i really want to know if you know if I'm the only one who's experiencing this, like this is, this just completely blew my mind today. Like I was literally driving home after dropping my daughter off from, uh, you know, at her sitters and it just went, it just hit me clear. Now the strange thing is, is I'm still seeing my divine masculine, like my divine masculine still shows up in dreams, but most of the time, most of the time he's there at the same time as my soulmate. They're there at the same time, and the energy is the same. It's really bizarre, guys. Like, I can't really explain it. And I've actually explained this to my soulmate. And, I mean, he's totally open to this. He's like, yeah, I mean, you know, totally. Like, I do feel like I know you already. Like, it's really bizarre. And we're we're very similar. Like, me and my soulmate, very, very similar. Um, our mannerisms are the same. His mannerisms remind me a lot of my Divine Masculine. It's really bizarre. He's like my Divine Masculine 2.0. Um... And I'm not the only one who sees it. Like, uh, people who know us um, um, together, who know um, us both, clear, mutual people, they've said the same thing. So it's really weird, right? Um, so anyway, um, so talking about the connections, definitely. And obviously, you want to take this as it resonates, you know, because this, um, this could be your inner masculine, inner divine feminine or inner feminine sorry or this could you know literally relate to your counterparts right now I, I feel like there's still some regret energy coming in really strongly with divine masculine like i'm i'm getting a lot of push and pull push and pull push and pull it's like divine Ma again and i said this for a while it's like divine masculine for the most part he don't he, he wants to do the right thing he wants to do the right thing but it's like where where's this perception what is the right thing what does the right thing mean what does it mean to do the right thing and right thing by whom um, and so I think that's where a lot of divine masculines are stuck or your inner masculine, you know, inner masculine, you know, we, when we think of that, we think of clear, we think of ego, we think of, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of us think of, um, the 3d, you know, because obviously the masculine energy rules the 3d, right? A lot of divine masculines are stuck in the 3d. A lot of times they, they put a lot of, um, emphasis and, um, importance on material wealth, material possessions, on, on, on family and things like that, right? Those are things that we think about when we think about 3D, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of them, it's been instilled in them for a really long time um, that these things are what make you happy, right? Uh, you know, having family, having money, having whatever, clear, right? Fulfilling your expectations, um, fulfilling the expectations placed on you will make you happy. That's what's going to fulfill your life, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like divine masculine is really in this energy of that's not right, that's not right. But at the same time, it's like, well, you know, again, if I let this go, I'm <laughs> not going to have anything, right? Not going to have anything. I'm not going to have anything left, right? Um, I won't have anything to call my own because everything that I have comes from uh, my job or comes from my family or whatever, okay? Or my, my culture, clear. Um, so that being said, I mean, I just, uh, again, like I feel just so much frustration and confusion coming from divine masculine and there's a lot of confusion just in general. And it could be, you know, these collapsing timelines that I'm talking about. Okay. That could be what's bringing in some of this confusion energy too. Cause you're sitting there going, well, I don't know what timeline I'm in. <laughs> right. And so masculine, the masculine, divine masculine or the masculine energy at the same time is kind of also sitting there trying to rationalize everything. Um, trying and literally overthinking everything instead of just doing what feels right. Okay. And, and at this point, it's almost like they don't know what feels right. Right. Because they don't, some of them still haven't fully, I mean, it's like they have acknowledged, but they still haven't fully, um, embraced, um, the spiritual side. It's like they, clear. It's like they, they feel like they're crazy, right? They feel like if they <laughs> let go of the 3D stuff, if they release the 3D stuff and then move into their spiritual path, you know, people are going to look at them like they're crazy. And to them, you know, it's all about optics. It's all about what they look like to other people. Like that is a main, 
I think that's that's one of the biggest uh, codependencies that the masculine energy has is optics, how they appear to others, right? That's important to them, okay? Instead of how they appear to themselves, how do they appear to others? That's how they feel good, right? Um, whereas the feminine energy, a lot of the feminine energy has got to the point, I don't really care. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me, right? And I think there's a fine line between not think, not caring what people think and not letting what people think bother you. Does it make sense? Okay, so you can let what people think not bother you, right? But I mean, you, you can still have a care for what people think, if that makes sense. I don't consider that necessarily a codependency. Like, oh, well, I want to know what you think. That's caring what somebody thinks. Like, let me know your opinion. I'm very curious. That's caring what somebody thinks, okay? But if somebody's opinion comes back and you're like, well, I mean, I don't really agree with that, but I'm not going to let it bother me. That's the difference, do you see? Like you can you can believe what you want, but it doesn't it, and it doesn't bother me. I'm fine, right? Um, so understand that difference, okay, divine feminine. But I, I really feel like a lot of divine feminines at this point are just like I give no craps. I, I <laughs> I'm going to do my thing. I don't really care what anybody thinks. Um, you know, I know that I'm doing what I feel is right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing what makes me feel good. I know that you know, whatever situation I was in before is not a good one, and I needed to get get out. It doesn't matter what people say. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. People thought me leaving my my husband people thought I was crazy for doing that despite all the things that were happening and I confided in my friends I confided in my my co-workers about what was happening at home and they still went behind my back and were like oh I think she's crazy yada 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 right and I found out about this through a um a, a co-worker and I was sitting here going wow wow people that I confided in people that that I told, uh, you know, my situation that, you know, I was looking for a moral support and we just went behind my back and started talking crap, you know, but then I was just like, you know, what? it doesn't trigger me. It, it's fine. Like, because I know that what I'm doing is the right thing for me. I know that if I stay in this situation, I might end up killing myself, like legit, like it just to the point where I was, I was deteriorating, literally deteriorating. Okay. So don't let what people think bother you to that point where it makes you hurt yourself, Divine Feminine, okay? And I think a lot of Divine Feminines have finally hit that wall. They're like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I know my family thinks I'm crazy for leaving this this great, fantastic job, you know, that I'm making so much money, but I'm unhappy here. I'm unhappy here. It's a toxic work environment. I don't want to be here. My family thinks I'm crazy for leaving. You know what? If, if it's abusive, doesn't matter how much money I'm making. I don't want to be there and neither should you. And if you feel like it's the right thing for you to leave and go to a place that you're happy and you're making less money, for goodness sakes, who gives two craps what anybody thinks, right? And I think that's kind of like the, the disconnect with divine masculine, divine feminine, the feminine, the masculine energy. Masculine is like, hold on to it, hold on to it, hold on to it. Super ego, right? You know, feminine energy is like, nope, let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Right. Cause I know it's not making me happy. Right. So there's that disconnect there. Trying to bring it back into balance is the main piece, I think like, and, and forgiving oneself for holding on to the situation for as long as you did. Right. Or for forgiving yourself for the things that you did maybe in the past. Like, I still feel like a lot of my masculines are hiding behind a serious mask. Like some of them have done some horrible things. Some of them have done some horrible things. Okay. And they're still not acknowledging that the things that they've done may have been horrible or they've acknowledged them to themselves, but they're sticking around in situations because they feel like they're making it up to that person or that job or whatever it is. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like they're, they're, they're like paying their dues or whatever. But at the same time, they still haven't asked for forgiveness. They still haven't fully forgiven themselves. They're still in that situation. They're still there because there's something holding them there. Whether it's money, whether it's expectation, whether it's children, whether it's, you know, material possession, whatever it may be, okay? They're there because they feel like they owe it to that situation to stay there because of all the things that they've done. So it's almost like they're kind of creating their own misery as a sense of creating their own karmic release so to speak but that's not how it works right they're still trying to control the situation they're still trying to manipulate the situation okay um so connecting energies I, I really feel like it's all about forgiveness right now within the connection like the, you you know divine feminine is like i don't care i don't care i don't care but there's still there's still this lingering thing with the connection like okay well you know i really want this to happen i really need this to happen you know and i'm gonna keep 
I'm going to keep putting this out here, putting this out here, putting this out here. Sure, you can put it out there, but remember to release the expectations. Like, I really feel like a lot of you are still trying to control the connections. You can't do that. You can't. I mean, you can try. You're just going to frustrate yourself, okay? Um, I think at this point, you know, most of my feminists have pretty much walked away. Um, the masculines at this point were trying to control the energy. Like, basically trying to pull in Divine Feminine's energy. Now they're they're giving it out, right? Divine Feminine's feeling it again. Divine Feminine's like, oh, okay. So what do I do now? Like, I, I know I've disconnected. I've, I've, I've stopped, you know, communicating. Whatever it is that you've done, okay? Um, you know, but now I'm, feeling inner now I'm feeling the energy again. What do I do? Honestly, I hate to say this, but it's really up to you at this point, okay? You can continue to, to send, you know, healing if you'd like. But I'm telling you, Divine Masculine needs to do it himself, okay? Divine, Divine Masculine has gotten so codependent on Divine Feminine's energy. The fact that you've pulled away, those of you who have, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for Divine Masculine. And it's a good thing for you, too. A lot of Divine Feminines have pretty much branched off. They've done their thing. They feel lighter. They feel, you know, much more at ease. They feel at home with themselves. They feel more inspired to do things, right? Whoever the Awakened Twin is, please take it as it resonates, okay? But, like, I really feel forgiveness is the main theme here. Right. And actually, that's interesting. And I, I just realized this because that actually came up on the uh, on the collective reading that I did today for the connecting energies was forgiveness. So that's that's actually really interesting. I completely sorry, I completely forgot. I've been so out of it today. <laughs> that's another thing I think is like this foggy energy, this this like, it's like nothing is real, like it doesn't feel like nothing feels real right now. And I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so first card out is dreams that's yeah nothing feels real it's like it, I just feel like you know I'm floating so again I, I might be too much in the 5d some of you might be too okay but but dreams as far as that goes I really feel like some of you are are just getting some some messages here like this is good this is a good thing I feel like you're getting communication probably uh from your counterpart possibly or or even you know from source about your counterpart and some of you I feel like you're still tempted you're still tempted by the energy you're still tempted by you know, maybe you got communication, maybe, maybe a little tiny bit of communication has come in, you got really excited, and you're like, oh, this is it, like, it's been like a year, you know, or two years, or whatever, and, um, you know, or even two months, and you're like, oh my god, he's, you know, he, she, whatever, finally communicated with me, now what do I do, right, um, so I understand that, right, but, but you, you've got to be very careful, okay, guard your energy, because it could be, it could, uh, could also just be, you know, them testing the waters, you know, and it's really difficult, because it's you, technically, you know, so you're sitting there going, well, how do I give my, how do I put boundaries up for myself, right? I mean, I really just feel some, right now, a lot of divine masculines especially, but some of you might still be going through a dark night of the soul. Now, keep in mind, dark night of the soul can take, take years, take years to get over, and you can have more than one, okay? I probably have three or four, at least, at least. There's probably some I'm not counting right now, okay? But I mean, I, a massive ego death is in store here, and, and what I mean, something is, I mean it something is coming in October there's something seriously coming in October and it could be this culmination of the, all of this whatever's going to happen is basically going to happen in October whether you're either going to be on the track to union with counterpart or your plan B or or uh, your timeline like whatever it is is going to happen in October okay masculine energy yeah not acknowledging feelings i'm telling you masculine energy is not acknowledging their feelings at all they just it's like they don't want to deal with it they still don't want to deal with it how do we change that energy divine feminine or whoever it is that's leading here you know that's a really difficult question you just got to deal with yours maybe there's something underlying that you're not recognizing okay you know looking at divine feminine's energy divine feminine yeah divine feminine is tired of feeling stuck divine feminine is just tired of feeling stuck and i really feel that's where that fire lit up under the butt is coming like, Divine Feminine is like, no, I'm done. I'm done with this. I don't want to feel like crap anymore. I don't want to be stuck in this situation anymore. D done. Bye. Right? So, uh, connecting energies here. Yeah, it, it feels like it's just kind of sitting there. It's that, there's something else that's coming up to be clear. And I really feel it's definitely this forgiveness factor. There's a lot of longing here still. There's a lot of, oh, you did me wrong. You, you know, you betrayed me. You were treated me horribly. You, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff still coming up in the connection. Okay. A lot of regret here. Um, and I, I still feel, I still feel some of you aren't really quite sure about your counterpart yet. I, I feel like some of you aren't sure about union. I feel like some of you are like, well, I don't know our window passed or, you know, he, they're not ready or it's never going to happen. Yada, yada, yada. Still a lot of doubt coming in, in the connections. Okay. 
Uh, so messages from Divine Masculine to Divine Feminine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom. They do, man. I'm telling you. Uh, Divine Feminine to Divine Masculine. Yeah, some of you still want to communicate here. Some of you, it's like you feel like you haven't communicated fully yet, but but this is also happening. So a lot of you, it's a forgiveness factor, but it's also, you know, have you have you thanked your counterpart yet? To their face or even in a message? Whatever. Um, you know? Okay, see, expect kept powerful change. I'm telling you guys, something is coming. Something, something is seriously coming. Balance, boom, yes, balance and intuition. Okay, so that's really significant because, you know, we were talking about this, I think, mostly yesterday about uh, making sure that you're staying, you know, in the intuition and, and but not being too much in one or, or the other, right? You have to find that balance between intuition and ego. Intuition and ego, you need it in its place. Okay, you need to have both. And I think that's where some of us are, are starting to get it. Okay, well, I need ego to deal with this situation. I need intuition to deal with this situation. Okay, I have to have an equal balance of both. It can't be too much in one or the other, right? But understanding when you're in one or the other, I think, is the key. Um, definitely would recommend doing some uh, searches on how to use intuition. I think, I want to say, yeah, just search, like, how do I know I'm in intuition on YouTube? And I guarantee you're going to find something. Um, I want to say, I can't remember her first name. It was Christina, maybe? Christina Lo Lopes? Christina Lopes, I think, did one. Um, if I can find the video, I'll put it in the description box. If not, guys, search for how to know if you're in intuition because I think it's really important um, to, to make sure you know when you're in intuition and when you're in ego. And I know I've mentioned this before. Um, you know, you know you're in ego when there's an emotional response because when you're in intuition, there is no emotional response, okay? Intuition has no emotion whatsoever. The heart and the brain think independently. Um, and I know that uh, Divine Unit of Souls did a thing about this too. She did this actually on the 8-8 uh, um, um, thing with Jupiter, which I thought was really interesting and absolutely true. Uh, the heart actually develops first before the brain. The heart has its own, its own brain, basically. It's its own thinker, okay? It thinks independently of the of the brain okay it's really really interesting so do some research on that guys um and maybe you know i i might talk about that maybe um on my next video too i might uh i don't know i'll figure it out all right guys well i hope this helped um if it has please like share subscribe and i'll see you guys later Bye bye